Hi and welcome to ATP. In this video I'm going to talk about the video quality on the Panasonic S1H. So I've been shooting video since about 2006 when I got my first Handycam from Sony which was one of the first HD video cameras to come out. Absolutely loved it, got hooked on video and I've been shooting it alongside my professional photography since then. I've used everything from that handy cam to the large shoulder cams and now through to drones in the sky uh, shooting 4K. So I've really kind of encapsulated everything to do with video. All that time I've been waiting for the perfect hybrid camera that will allow me to take just one camera out. Rather than taking a high resolution stills camera and a high resolution video camera with me, I've been looking for that one perfect solution. Uh, I've come close on a couple of things, but really nothing has come close to what the S1H offers. Now I thought things like the Panasonic GH5, which I'm filming with now, would do it, but um, whereas the, the video quality on the GH5 is out of this world, the stills image quality doesn't really do it for me. It doesn't come close to things like the any of the other range, Nikons, Canons, Sonys. Uh, the stills quality from a Micro Four Third sensor doesn't really do it for what I need. So when I got hold of the S1H, the Panasonic S1H, it's about as close as I can get to the perfect hybrid camera. The stills quality from the 24 megapixel sensor and the video quality from the 6K, from the, the full frame 6K video is just out of this world. So this is about the closest I've ever come to it. Now, the, so for me, already it's a good stills camera, but the video quality is very, very, very good. Now, like I said, I've been using the GH5 and when I use it on 400 megabits per second, all intra 4K, 10 to, two, uh, sorry, 422 output, it's absolutely amazing. It's fantastic and this is no different. I'm seeing it's very, you'll see on the, the video comparison, which I'll do in another video, it's not that much different from the GH5. You've just got a larger sensor, which means that your bokeh, your bokeh, is going to be slightly better with a full frame sensor so the, the background blur will be slightly better from this although saying that the gh5 with the metabones adapter and one of the fast canon lenses such as the 1.4 50 mil or the 70 to 200 2.8 you still get that great background blur so there's always ways around it but the thing with this camera is it shoots up to 5.9k 30 frames a second also it does 6k full 6K at 24 frames a second. So again, I'll do another video showing the benefits of shooting 6K, even if you output at 1080. But to have that feature in here is fantastic. So you've got everything from 1080p through to 6K on a full frame sensor. Absolutely fantastic. And the quality is amazing. So I'm gonna run through the, the, um, the menu very quickly, just touching on some of the, there's so much in the menu to do with the video, it would take me all day to go through it. So I'm gonna flick through it quickly and talk about the main things, the main features that would help you with your video. So we start on the, I'm going from the bottom upwards. So we start on the, the bottom here, we've got starting with image stabilizer. So you've got the, the inbuilt stabilizer on, on the sensor and you've got operation mode. So you can have just normal operation mode there, but you've also got the e-stabilization for video. You've got the Boost IS video and anamorphic video stabilization as well. So you've got lots of options. And believe me, <laughs> I've handheld this for stills at two and a half seconds uh, exposure and they've come out perfectly sharp. For video, I was handheld hand holding the other day and it's just brilliant, it's fantastic. So if you manage to lean against a wall or something and you're holding it, you won't see. It looks like it's on a tripod. You won't see any movement at all. So it's brilliant. And even if you're hand holding and walking gently, you're going to get some really good footage and then with some stabilization software it's going to look like you're on rails it's brilliant uh, you've got silent mode so it means the beeps and things won't go off when you're filming headphone volume sound output i won't go into all too many of these you've got the mic socket fantastic it's a 3.5 mil uh, sound socket mic socket i'm not going to go through too much of these uh, autofocus i won't go into that i haven't had time to actually go through the multitude of autofocus options in here. There must be a way of actually making it work well, but I've, I've been a bit put off with the GH5 and GH4. The autofocus wasn't brilliant, especially coming from the Canon, uh, where you've got the dual pixel autofocus, which is just out of this world. I haven't bothered looking at this. I normally do manual focus anyway, so I'm not really fussed about that. So you've, well, I won't go into that. HDMI raw data output, won't go into that because I haven't been shooting raw. 
Uh, so let's go through the, the record quality settings. I'm going to start from the bottom again. There's five pages of settings. So we start off at full HD, 25 frames a second, 420 8-bit video. Then you go up to full HD, 25 frames a second, 10-bit 422. So already there, you're getting into the high quality for, for the 422 10-bit. Uh, 100 megabits per second recording. You've got high uh, HLG available on that as well. Then you go to uh, full frame 25p 422 10-bit all eye, 200 megabits per second. Uh, then we go, I'm not going to go through too many of these. You've got then 50i 422 10-bit. Um, uh, let's just go through some of these. Let's find some, some of the decent ones. <laughs> it's crazy. Then you've got full HD at 50p 10-bit. 422 output. Um, there's just too many. There's, there's so many options here you'll never want for anything with regards to video. Let's put it that way. So let's go through to some of my favorites. We've got 4K 25p, obviously 30p if you're in the States or anywhere else that does 30p, NTSC, uh, with 422 10-bit um, output, 150 megabits per second. Then you've got 4K 25p 422 10-bit 400 megabits per second and that's what I've been comparing with the GH5 because that's got the same setting on there that's the highest setting from the GH5 so it's best for me to compare that setting with this one because the quality is absolutely sublime it's fantastic then we've got 4k 50p 420 420 8, um, 8 bit 150 megabits per second 4k 50p 420 10 bit 200 megabits per second then you've got C4K settings, lots of C4K settings. Um, let's go to the last screen. So we've got the anamorphic settings as well. You've got a multitude of anamorphic settings. Uh, let's get right up to the top here where we've got 5K 25P 420 10-bit 200 megabits per second. And then you've got the 5.9K 25P 420 10-bit 200 megabits per second so that 5.9k is effectively just about 6k but the the point of that is and I'm, you'll see this on another video what the what's the point of 6k video where you can actually take multiple edits if you're outputting at 1080p you can do some insane edits and uh transitions and things and uh, zooms and pans using 6k and then output it looks like you've got an operator operating the camera whereas all you're doing is doing it all in post-production so the video quality, the video options are just ridiculous. They're so, so good. There's so many of them. Like I said, you won't want for anything. In fact, you may get a little bit confused. So all you need to do, I would recommend for the highest quality video for 4K, if you're not doing too much edit, then it's the 4K, 400 megabits per second, 10 bit, 422, 25 frames or 30 frames a second. That will do you, as long as you've got a powerful enough computer to edit, that is about as good as you need to go for most projects. Obviously, you can output at 1080 if you just need 1080. Um, but if you want to do super, super edits, so you want to zoom into the clips, then obviously you go to the 5.9K or the 6K, 24 frames a second. So that's about it for the video quality. I mean, for the settings, we're going to look at some clips now. But I would always recommend to keep it on the actual video setting on the camera here. Obviously, you can go to the manual settings and shutter priority, aperture priority. But really, you want to be in manual using the video settings there. Now, also to do with video, what I like about this camera is you've got your remote control, you've got headphone jack, microphone in, like I said, you've got 10, uh, you've got the full size HDMI out and you've got the, um, the USB-C type C there. Um, don't know what else to say with video. Like I say, the autofocus, I wouldn't rely on. I'd stick with manual. Obviously, I'm going to look at that at some point when I get this camera to buy. Other than that, for video using good quality lenses this is just fantastic like I said it's heavy so in a way that's good if you're carrying it it's going to be much easier to keep still um, on a tripod obviously it's good. you're going to need a good tripod to hold this thing especially if you've got the 70 to 200 on there because they do weigh quite a bit okay um, so that's it for really the run through of the video specs there's plenty there so let's now have a look at some of the video quality from the clips I've taken in and around Weymouth
So I hope you enjoyed those video clips and I hope you saw the quality that this camera outputs at 4K. Now the settings I used there were all 4K UHD 10 bit 422 400 megabits per second outputs, the highest this does in 4K. And the reason I chose that is because it's the same as the GH5. That's got exactly the same settings. The only difference is that's a micro four third sensor. This is full frame. So I hope you saw that the quality there is absolutely sublime. If you're looking for a really good video camera, then you won't go wrong with this. Now, if you're looking for a smaller video camera that you're not fussed too much about the stills quality, then the GH5 is fantastic. And if you look at the comparison video I did, you can either see it on the screen now or somewhere below, um, you'll see that there's really not much difference between the Micro Four Third sensor and the full frame. The only real difference you might see is the bokeh or the bokeh, where the background blur is slightly better if you're using a wide aperture from a, a full frame sensor. Other than that, even if you've got a Metabones um, uh, adapter on there with a fast Canon lens, you'll get very close to that bokeh anyway, and you'll see that in the comparison video. But really, if you're looking for a small form camera, the GH5 is fantastic. You can get it for a steal, especially when the GX6 comes out. So I would maybe look at buying one of those. I'm keeping that one forever. If you need a bigger form camera with high resolution stills and 6K, then the S1H is an absolute no brainer. So again, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to watch the others in this series and give us a like, thumbs up, share, do whatever you need to do. And we'll see you on the next video.